Hey everyone, Dark Swordsman here, and today I'm bringing you a video that is really stupid and I had no idea of how to make. So, um, I really don't do much. Uh, I'm in college currently, I don't have any money. Uh, I do work every now and then when I come home, but I don't really have anything to do because I don't have the money to do it. Um, so today we're going to uh, visit something that I used to do um, with my car, and that has to do with this big brick thing here. Um, basically, what this is is a airflow meter, and unlike current cars, this is archaic, and uh, it still works, but isn't as efficient and really restricts airflow. Um, so on the 90 to 93 Miata, you have this airflow meter, uh, and in comparison to the mass airflow sensor, um, it's big, chunky, and it doesn't get as good of a reading as the uh, mass airflow sensor. Um, so basically, instead of being this little slick little thing that just has a little sensor on the inside, it has this huge ass flap that does all this stuff on top, and it's really annoying. But it's fun because it's a little bit easier to understand. There's things you can mess with it, and that's what I previously was trying to do on my old exhaust uh, because I am a ricer and I like to try to shoot flames. Um, I was trying to mess with it to get more flames, and while I did hear more little pops and stuff, I didn't really have the exhaust to shoot flames. Now that I have the proper exhaust to shoot flames, such as a uh, no catalytic converter um, and a very free-flowing exhaust, um, I'm already kind of shooting flames with the stock uh, airflow meter in there with no adjustments on it. So today we're going to dick around and try to shoot more flames, because <laughs> I have nothing else to do. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to explain a little bit of what's going on inside, just so that we have an idea of what I'm doing. Um, so first off, you see all these wires and, and stuff. Um, you have this wire here, you have this wire, you have this thing that moves around. Basically, the core of this is it's measuring how much air is going through the intake into the engine. Um, so the first big thing you see is this big thing right here with these arms and this clock spring. Basically, the clock spring is having this come back to a neutral position or a zero position. And as air flows through it, it turns more and more and more, going to a higher point. Uh, basically, the circuit board has a black layer on it that has all these little connection points with the silver, as you can see right there. Uh, and basically, it's taking the signal from pin six, which goes into here into this needle. Um, you can think of it like a, uh, a record. It's kind of like that, that kind of needle. Um, it finds the closest connections on that black piece to the needle and that basically gives it a certain voltage. That voltage is then given to the computer so that way you can say, okay, you have this much air, I'm going to throw this much fuel in so that way I don't blow up your shit. Um, and then the other part of it is there's these other little pins here that do a different thing. So like pins three and seven, these pins here, um, you can see right here that there is a intake air temperature sensor. And then the next part right here, which I will get B-roll of, is uh, the uh, fuel uh, pump cut. So basically this little arm pushes the first pin's little flapper arm away from the second pin's resting arm, and that disengages the fuel pump, so that way the, it doesn't run while the car's off, or in the on position when it's not started. So once the car starts, it turns on the fuel pump, and then it does the thing. Um, and then the rest of the pins are just connected, three, four, and five are connected to the actual board, and receive the signal of uh, where this is. And then the last big thing here, and you'll probably see it, this little black mark. Uh, this black mark on this golden colored thing, this is the uh, notch or whatever for the clock spring. Basically, uh, you can adjust this and it rests on the little clip right here uh, to be tighter or looser. And basically that adjusts the um, band of how much voltage is sent to the computer. So basically if you make it tighter, it'll read less airflow, so it'll make it leaner, um, even though there may be more air going through it. And if you make it looser, it'll read uh, richer, or it'll read more air, so it'll make the computer richer. And the, our goal is to make it as rich as possible without killing it, so that way we can shoot mad flames, yo. Um, so this little black mark here is the setting that I previously found was kind of in the middle where the stock one was. Um, I was stupid and didn't make that mark before I adjusted it, so I had to do that afterwards. But anyways, um, I'll be messing with this while we are doing the actual testing to see if we can shoot mad flames. And uh, yeah, why not get right into it? Now before we do anything, I've already made some footage of the stock AFM. 
um, in, in my previous video, but I'll post it here just so you can see. Um, and then we'll get into the actual messing around with the AFM and trying to shoot mad flames. So the first thing we obviously have to do is remove the old one and put the new one on. And with the magic of video editing, I can do something a little bit like this. I wish it were that easy, but it actually is pretty easy. If you're actually interested in doing this, all you need is a 10 millimeter and a flat, uh, sorry, Phillips head screwdriver. Um, and then all you got to do, undo this, and then take this hose off. There's a 10 millimeter right there that I completely lost, uh, but uh, you don't really need it. It stays in place. And then you just have four 10 millimeters right here. And then all you, you got to make sure that you unplug and then replug this uh, connector. And usually it has a C-clip on it, but I, I lost mine. And uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. Before I actually do anything, I will show you how it actually works with the car running. So as you can see, I still haven't moved this yet. What I am gonna do is move it so that way it makes it slightly richer. I'm probably only gonna do like two or three teeth. Um, but basically, if you move it counterclockwise, the clock spring, if you move it counterclockwise, it'll make it richer. And if you make it, if you turn it clockwise, it'll make it leaner. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna try to hold this back with the flathead and move it with the Phillips. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that's a little bit richer than before. Um, and we'll see how that goes.